Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered what happens when lightning strikes the ocean? It doesn't take too much brain power to work out that getting out of the sea during a thunderstorm is probably a good idea. But for those animals that live in the water, they have no choice but to stay put. So, do they get electrocuted? Well, thankfully, most lightning strikes take place between the clouds. Only 25% of them actually ever reach the surface of the Earth, and of those, very few touch down on the ocean. By using a low-orbit satellite, NASA scientists have calculated the global distribution of lightning, and it seems most of the world's oceans receive less than two strikes per kilometre squared each year. Which is really very little, especially when compared to Kifuka in Central Africa, which receives 158 strikes per kilometre squared per year. The reason so little lightning hits the open ocean is simple. Water has a high heat capacity, which means it takes a lot of energy to heat it up. As a result, the low-lying air on the surface of the ocean doesn't get very warm, and without this blanket of hot air, a thunderstorm simply cannot form like it does on dry land. Nonetheless, lightning does on occasion strike the ocean, and the heat alone from a single flash could annihilate localised fish. Air around a bolt of lightning is superheated to approximately 20,000 degrees Celsius. That's three times hotter than the surface of the sun. Any fish in that vicinity doesn't stand a chance. But what about the electrical discharge? Well, the average lightning bolt unleashes 30,000 amps. And when you consider it takes just 100 milliamps to kill someone, why aren't all the fish dead? Well, interestingly, lightning just doesn't penetrate the ocean as you might expect. Due to what's called the skin effect, electrical currents have a tendency to spread across the surface of a good conductor. And salt water is a good conductor, compared to air or even fresh water. In fact, pure water is actually considered an electrical insulator because it has so few ions. Because of this skin effect, the lightning charge dissipates across the surface and penetrates only a few metres deep, depending on the strength of the strike. Thus, it's only the fish in this immediate and small area that are likely to be injured by the lightning bolt. But considering that so much power is unleashed during a lightning storm, why can't we harness some of this energy for our own needs? I mean, one lightning strike can release between 1 and 10 billion joules of energy, and there are around 4 million lightning strikes on our planet every single day. So why aren't we plugging our homes into the thunderclouds? Well, sadly, the distribution of lightning is just too sparse and unpredictable to efficiently harvest it. At the Lightning Research Centre in Florida, their 250-acre lightning hotspot receives, on average, just six natural occurring lightning strikes per year. Even if every joule of energy could be harnessed, this would power just under 700 household 100-watt light bulbs for just a day. That's not an awful lot. If the same area were covered with solar panels, several million light bulbs could be powered. If you have any questions about the natural world, leave them in the comments below and we'll try to answer them in a future episode. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon on Earth Unplugged. From a very young age, it's crammed into our cranial neurons that water and electricity don't mix. But that could be further from the truth, could it? Water and electricity make the perfect marriage and the electric eel thrives on that very fact. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So right now, I'm feeling... Ah! <laughs> oh, that's... Ah! <laughs>